This webinar deals with Tetralogy of Fallow, its prenatal diagnosis and management during pregnancy. Tetralogy of Fallow is a common cardiac condition and it's named after the French physician Etienne Louis Arthur Fallow who described it first in 1888. This occurs during the development of the heart in pregnancy and it affects about one in every two and a half thousand babies who were born in the United States. As cardiologists, we see this fairly frequently and it, compr it comprises almost 5% of all babies who are born with heart problems. Most children will need treatment during the first year of life, but outcomes are very good generally with more than 90% of all affected babies surviving to be healthy adults. So how does tetralogy differ from the normal heart? If we look at these two diagrams, we can see that the normal heart has a blue and a red side. There are two pumps, the right and left ventricle, and the right ventricle pumps blue blood to the lungs, and the left ventricle pumps red blood around the body. There are several differences if we look at the cartoon depicting Tetralogy of Fallow. There are four characteristic features. There is firstly a ventricular septal defect, which is a hole in the wall separating the red and the blue blood. We can see that the body artery, the aorta, sits over this hole and this is termed an overriding aorta. The lung artery or pulmonary artery is much slimmer usually in Tetralogy of Fallow than it is in the normal heart, but there is a wide spectrum of sizes. In general, this results in a reduced amount of blood going to baby's lungs after birth. And the fourth thing is a thickening of the wall of the right pump, the right ventricle. This isn't a common finding in before birth in the fetus, but it is true, uh, it is seen in babies and children who are left for some while without surgery. So when we're performing an ultrasound scan in the pregnant mum before, before delivery, what is it that we can see? Well, the sonographer will look at the four chamber view of the heart. And we have here an image of a normal four chamber view with a left and right ventricle that are very equal in size and the two collecting chambers, the left and the right one. We can see a wall of muscle separating the red from the blue blood. But if we look at the four chamber view in a case of Tetralogy of Fallow, it also shares these characteristics. There is a left side and a right side, the red and the blue sides, and there appears to be a solid wall of muscle separating them, just as seen in the normal heart. The ventricular septal defect, or VSD, isn't seen very easily. And this may be one reason why this condition is not picked up in all cases of Tetralogy of Fallow when mum has a screening examination before birth. This hole is only seen as the sonographer sweeps up towards the baby's head. These two clips show this sweep up in the normal heart with the left and the right ventricular outflow tracts crossing over each other. They seem to be almost equal in size. And look at the comparison with Tetralogy of Fallow. This is in a different orientation, but we can see the left ventricle to aorta here and the much slimmer pulmonary trunk or lung artery crossing over it. So once the sonographer has scanned a little out of the four chamber view towards baby's head, the difference in the sizes of the big arteries leaving the heart become very obvious 
and this is almost always seen in Tetralogy of Fallow, even in an unborn baby. We can pick this up as early as 14 weeks if a mum has a very early scan, but typically it's, it's detected at about 20 to 24 weeks of gestation when most pregnant mothers have their detailed anatomy scan. The pregnant woman herself will not suspect anything. She should not expect to have any signs or symptoms, even if she's carrying a baby with quite a serious heart problem. Once the local OB detects a heart problem, the pregnant woman will be referred usually to a maternal-fetal medicine expert or a cardiologist for confirmation of the heart defect. We recognise that about one in three fetuses with tetralogy may have a problem in another organ system or may have a chromosomal defect that can only be detected by an invasive test. The fetal echocardiogram will usually be performed by somebody who is trained in paediatric cardiology and who has specialised in further training in looking at the heart in the fetus. Meanwhile, the materno-fetal medicine team will scan the rest of the baby to check for other malformations. The team will pull together their expertise to complete the diagnosis, counsel the mother and offer more tests where appropriate. And this truly is a multidisciplinary team approach. The journey for the pregnant mum usually starts with her primary OB and when a problem is detected to the materno-fetal medicine team which involves a fetal cardiologist. They will usually have a genetic counsellor on site who can counsel the mother all together to come to the primary diagnosis. Plans will then be made for after baby is born and these will involve the neonatal team, the paediatric cardiology team and the cardiovascular surgeons. If baby has other malformations, we may need other paediatric specialists such as specialist paediatric surgeons, and together they will formulate a perinatal plan so that baby's place and timing of delivery can be worked out and the first steps to secure baby's well-being after birth uh, devised. So what do you expect if you attend a specialist centre following a potential diagnosis? Well, you will have ultrasound-based scans to confirm the diagnosis that your local OB may have suspected. This will include a heart scan for congenital heart disease and for other related conditions because we know they can be commonly associated together. Specialist genetic counsellors will talk to the family and offer appropriate testing based sometimes on the family history and on the findings of the baby in collaboration. It's important to bring with you any information you have on inherited conditions that can run in the family. The whole team will discuss the case and counsel the family to arrange follow-up for subsequent appointments for scans, for consultations and perhaps for other types of investigations. And we usually plan a visit both to the neonatal unit if baby will be will require surgery soon after birth and to visit the surgical unit which is particularly important if a baby is well enough to go home prior to their treatment. What will we look for in the ultrasound scans? Well, we will want to do more than one scan during pregnancy because there are certain things in Tetralogy of Fallow that we would like to monitor. It's a spectrum of disease, particularly when we're looking at the size of the lung artery. It can involve a good sized lung artery with mild or no pulmonary obstruction, or this obstruction may look very severe right from the first scan that's performed. But we know that a baby with a reasonable 
a, a reasonable pulmonary trunk may develop a degree of stenosis that can become quite important before delivery. It's important to know how much blood flow will be going to the lungs uh, at the time of delivery because this may alter where we want to deliver the baby and what we need to do for baby immediately after birth. For families whose baby has mild or no pulmonary obstruction, delivery can be local with the local team uh, as the family chooses. But for babies with more severe obstruction, the best quality of care will be for baby to deliver in a cardiac centre or in a, an obstetric unit that's adjacent to where the baby can receive their operation. A baby with no obstruction will not require any specialised drugs after delivery. And usually, depending on how well the baby adapts to circumstances after birth, baby can be examined by the paediatric cardiology team a few days after delivery. But babies with severe or complete obstruction to blood flow to the lungs are called ductal dependent and we need to plan specially for their delivery and immediate care. So we would plan for delivery in a hospital that's near to a specialised cardiac unit. We need planning between the perinatal, neonatal and cardiology teams. They will work together and coordinate the immediate care for a baby after delivery. Usually a normal delivery is still possible. The baby's duct will be kept open using prostaglandins. This is a drug that enables the baby's circulation to remain almost the same as in the womb. This maintains a good blood supply to the lungs while baby is stabilised prior to surgery. The surgeons will insert a false tube between the red and the blue blood supplies outside of the heart in order to provide a better flow of blood to the lungs. It's important also for babies with extra malformations, perhaps a malformation of the bowel, to deliver in a specialised unit because surgery after birth may be required for these uh, extra cardiac problems and it's important to work out the order in which management uh, should be delivered to baby, which surgery should come first. And to do this, a multidisciplinary team is very important. So we have discussed today the prenatal diagnosis of tetralogy of fallow, the essential monitoring during pregnancy and the planning that goes into deliv safe delivery and management of a baby affected with this heart condition. If you would like more information about tetralogy of fallow, please contact us at 832 325 7288. Thank you.